what do students building robots in Charlotte have to do with teaching kids in India about computers? You're about to find out. It's an amazing story of building a culture of success and service. Carolina Impact's Tanisha Johnson has the story. Working on computers and building complex machinery used to be reserved for a small percentage of people, but not anymore. And these students in Charlotte are proof they are ready for this world. The presentation, I'm going to do that Wednesday and then Jack. But 16 year old Sunny Gorapati has taken all this knowledge to a whole new level and halfway around the world. I just figured out a way to leverage the skill that I already knew and, um, you know, use it to like help out multiple people. When the high school junior went back to visit relatives in India, she could see the need for basic computer skills. She wanted to help and even establish a nonprofit organization for the work. The goal? To teach children in rural parts of India basic computer skills and introduce them to engineering and design as they build Lego robots. I figured out that, you know, if I'm able to teach little ro like classes on robots, then I should be able to teach like basic computer skills that people here take for granted. The effort has now evolved into a partnership with the Indian government. She creates curriculum for teachers, which in turn shows students how to build robots and solve real life problems. I want them to be able to break out of that poverty cycle and when they're old enough to have other things on their mind other than what am I going to have for dinner tonight, like I want them to be able to know that there are these issues that they can use their technical knowledge to solve. But Gaurapati says she knows she couldn't have done this on her own. Her team at Queen City Robotics Alliance supports her in the effort. I don't even think that I would have got it to a full-fledged nonprofit without my team. I got the ball rolling, but like I've been chasing the ball ever since because it's just been growing so quickly. We have like 2,800 students right now in seven different schools and we're giving salaries to 12 of the teachers. As important as that work is, so is this. Charlotte area middle and high school students on this night huddling around their life-size inventions. They're using the latest tools and skills to wire, recalculate movements, and test the performance of their new robots. It's more complex than ever before, but they're not doing it alone. On their team, peers and industry professionals giving them the chance to learn while they work. I've gone from being a rookie year, just to knowing nothing, to controls leader of Yeti Robotics. That's pretty awesome. Being able to work with both electrical and programming, things I'm learned that I'm passionate about and that I want to take this into a career. For many like Juan Carlos Escobar Avila, the hands-on experience beats sitting in the classroom. You learn faster, you learn more. At just 15 years old, he's already an early engineering college student at UNC Charlotte. He says it takes a minute to catch on, but once you get it, there's no limit to what they can create. After a while, they kind of like get you on this roll and you start thinking like they do. And it's just drop dropping how much higher up you can go. Lead mechanical mentor Robbie Hoyler started out just like these students in 2003. Today, the simulation specialist helps companies develop their products digitally. And when he's not doing that, he's taking what he learns at work to train a whole new generation. The most exciting thing about being on this side is that I actually use this in my job to develop myself. I get to see all of the data sets that they create and I get to help them create new things. I get to teach them while doing it. They learn, I learn, they teach me as well. Organizers say what they're doing here is all about inspiring and building future leaders in the areas of science and technology, making the idea of STEM cool and preparing kids to work in industries like video gaming, music, computer software and design even before they graduate from high school. It just gives them such a leg up because we're real, we're using real tools in the real industrial world. So, so in terms of both fabrication and then also programming and also um, design. Now, kids who were once a part of the program are advancing in ways they couldn't have imagined. Sure, they're winning competitions, but they're also winning in life. A lot of the students that have already graduated are actually already in industry since we've been running this team since 2010. Uh, one of them actually works at Junior Motorsports. We have some that work at Google. We have a lot of them that do internships. A lot of them, when they go just directly to college, they're so far ahead that they actually finish college early. And some have been offered jobs with six-figure salaries to walk into when they graduate college. As students continue to excel, there are changes in the group. 
One of the most noticeable are the girls, not just on the team, but in leadership roles. We realized quickly that that needed to change. So um, we started actively recruiting girls. And now Queen City Robotics Alliance is partnering with organizations like 100 Black Men to train and recruit minority students. Robotics was once for the very few, but no more. There is so much value in hands-on learning, and you have to admit, it looks cool and looks like a lot of fun. Clearly, science and technology rule here. Students are learning that with these skills, they can also change the world. For Carolina Impact, I'm Tanisha Johnson reporting. Thank you so much, Tanisha. It's great to see the impact those kids can have. Well, it costs about $4,000 for students to build these robots, and they raise money to do it. They do get help from sponsors like Collins Aerospace and Bosch Rexroth.